Today we're going to look at the um, how do we prove um, if we have a set A and a set B? How do we prove that they're equal to each other, right? So to prove that they're equal to each other, well, we must look at the definition of two sets being equal before we begin, right? So the definition says that if A and B are two sets, and I have talked about sets in the definition of a set in my videos that I made before. Right, so if A and B are two sets, we said that they're equal, or A is equal to B if and only if A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A. So what do you mean by subset? Well, let's do a rewind or a, or a. Yeah, let's let's look at this. So let's say A is um. Oh, sorry. Let's say A is um, uh, one, two, three, four. And B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can see that all of the element in A are a part of element in B, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So in this case, we can say that A is a subset of B. So that's what I mean. It means that you pick every element in A and it fits right into B. And then for them to be equal to, equal to each other, well, um, A must be a subset of B, and B must be a subset of A. Right, so let's look at an example question to make this more clear. Okay. Our example question right here says that, well, we're giving that A is a set which contains real number X, and that X is not equal to negative 1, and that X over X plus 1 squared is smaller than X. And then we have a set B, which is also um, um, contained of all real number X. But in the, in the B case, it, we are given that X is bigger than zero. So the question is, how do we prove, prove A is equal to B? Well, like I said, if A is equal to B, then A is a subset of B. And B is a subset of A. So fundamentally... This question is asking you to prove that A is a subset of B and that B is a subset of A. So let's do A is a subset of B first. So let's A is a subset of B. So how do we um how do we prove this? Well, we assume there is some arbitrary um x in A. So so let's say if x in A, right? So A is a set and x in this case is the element of A. So we say that there's an arbitrary element x in set A. Then then we have x is bigger than or uh, bigger or equal to x over x plus one over square right this is just given over here i'm just i'm just rewriting it in the the opposite direction but one thing that um you have always learned is that like um when we square any real number it's always bigger than zero so this could implies x is bigger than zero right no no wait this is actually incorrect more correct version will be that this is bigger than x over x plus 1 square, which is bigger or equal to 0, right? Because we learned that any real number that you take, you square it, it's going to be always be bigger or equal to 0. So that's why this inequality works right here. So as you can see in this case, that if we choose that um, x in our a set a is bigger than 0, and look at our definition for set b, well, that... Well, set B is that X is bigger or equal to zero. So therefore, um, X is bigger than zero, be bigger or equal to zero implies that X must be in set B as well. Because look, so we so so let's rewind what we did. We choose an arbitrary element from set A, and we've shown that it is bigger or equal to zero, which that is satisfy the definition of set B. So so um, so let's write it down x is bigger than or equal to 0 implies x is an element of b right because in this case x is um um in set b is a real number and x is bigger than or equal to 0 so see we pick an element from um set a and that is we prove that it satisfy condition from set b so therefore it must be a subset of b right so that will be it for Proving A is a subset of B. So now we need to prove B is a subset of A to complete this. 
Well, how do we prove that B is a subset of A? Well, well, like, um, look at this whole logic that I did earlier of proving A is a subset of B. So what I did is that to prove A is a subset of B, we consider an arbitrary element X from A and explain why this X must be a member of set B. So if we're doing the opposite here, we should consider an arbitrary element X from set B and explain that why this X must be a member of set A. So we need to start with um, set B. So, so assume um, if X is an element of B, right? So what do we have here? How our task is to show that it is um, um, an element of A in this case, right? Well, look at the first condition of um, set A is that X is um, not equal to negative 1, right? That's this first condition right here. And then that is must be true because we know that if an element is in set B, it must be bigger or equal to 0. And if it's bigger or equal to 0, it must not be equal to negative 1. So the first condition is satisfied. So this condition right here is satisfied. So now we need to show this, right? And, this, and the second is that uh, we want to show that... Um, as x is bigger than or equal to 0, x um, over x plus 1 squared is smaller or equal to x. So this is what we want to show. And we can show this by um, some simple um, algebra manipulation. So this implies that we just do some basic algebra, right? So this is x squared, x plus 1 squared smaller or equal to x which implies that um wait which implies that x square is smaller or equal to x plus one square times x right we just move the x plus one square to the right side of the equation and then this would just implies x cube plus x square plus x is bigger than zero and as we can see this inequality right here is valid let's write it is valid as x is bigger than or equal to zero right so th because this is valid hence this inequality from the start is valid as well so this show that x is um equal to a to so this show right because why is this valid right i want to explain that well, we can see that uh, we're given that x is bigger than or equal to 0. And that x, so x cubed, that must be bigger or equal to 0 as well. x squared must be bigger than or equal to 0 as well. And as x is, must be bigger or equal to 0 as well. So we, when you sum them up, plus them together, you can see that it must be bigger or equal to 0. So therefore, this inequality here is valid, which then proves that this inequality that we started is valid as well which is what we wanted to prove in the first place. So now we can show that this condition is satisfied and this condition of not equal to negative 1 is satisfied. So therefore, we have successfully proved that B is a subset of A. So let's rewind the logic again. How do we prove that um, A is equal to B? Well, we prove A is equal to B by proving that A is a subset of B and that B is a subset of A. And to prove that A is a subset of B or B is a subset of A, we choose an um, arbitrary element X from whatever the first, uh, let's say A is a subset of B, right? How do we prove this? Well, we choose an arbitrary element X from A and we explain why this X must be a member of set B. And the same logic for B is a subset of A. We choose an element, arbitrary element X from B and then we show that, um, somehow show that it must be an element of um, set A. So therefore, you prove that these two um, um, are um, equal to each other by showing that they're a subset of each other. So that's how you prove that two sets are equal to each other, right? So um, thanks for watching and um, please subscribe.